So my first question is, the show has played around with the idea that Christy experienced some non-platonic feelings for Kenny while they were trapped in the town. They still are trapped in the town. So to mm -hmm. what extent are those feelings still in play now that Christy's fiance is also in the town? Yeah, I think Christy's focus is definitely on Marielle. I think there's a lot of adjusting for Marielle <laughs> to understand. And yeah, her focus is totally uh, gravitated towards that. Not to mention she's navigating an absolutely treacherous withdrawal. So the focus is, yeah, quite obvious. But yeah, like Christy had a moment of vulnerability at the end of season one where she truly wasn't sure what to do. I don't even think she knows if it's non-platonic or not. You know, she there's been no time for this, <laughs> this poor girl to like sit with herself and really figure out what is going on for her she's constantly being pulled to so many crises that yeah she hasn't really done that deep reflective work yeah um, but she's definitely I think in need of a friend uh, but it's so interesting this season because there's so much happening in Christie's world and so much happening in Kenny's world and they haven't had a chance to come together and really talk about what the hell is going on mm -hmm. in either of those worlds um, but I think there is something visceral and, and intrinsic about their dynamic that they're still even in this hellscape them navigating their own their own situations they're still able to come together and be there for one another when when needed and we see that more um towards the end of the season especially Kenny being there for Christy during some during a during a pretty devastating moment so yeah she hasn't figured it out she's just in, she's in survival mode <laughs> I think everyone is, yeah. which, which brings us to the fact that Christy is the town doctor. So she gets a front mm -hmm. row seat to some of the most gruesome things that happen there. Uh, yeah. Does any part of filming that make you squeamish? And can you offer an insight into the technical process of doing that one scene where you've got a girl nailed to a tree by her head? <laughs> Yeah, so I'm a nurse in real life. So a lot of that part of who I am got to play into a lot of Christy, which is great. So I've also got to have a lot of say uh, in terms of how those things would go in real life. So because I've done the real thing, I'm not so squeamish when we're doing it on camera. I was like, oh, this is vague. So, but it's, it can get creepy because once you're in the scene, everything else kind of melts away and it feels real but as for the yeah the whole night was crazy we have an incredible prosthetics department Patrick Baxter heads and uh yeah he we basically had Phoebe on a like on a tree and she had this prosthetic piece in her forehead and it's almost we called it the unicorn horn because it kind of looked unicorn horn and they basically like glued it to her head in some way and then they'd position her, her in a way that it looked like it was coming through her head. Um, and that's kind of how they did it. It's pretty crazy. We also see Christy struggling with the guilt over the role that she feels she played in what happened between Sarah and her brother. Um, mm. As an actor, was that guilt something that you were always playing sort of in the nuances of her behavior? Or is it more so something that's just resurfacing specifically because Sarah has returned? Yeah, I think it's a lot of things. I think for Christy, it was uh, motivated by a desire to set things straight, to inform Sarah that that's not what she meant, that that's not, that wasn't permission. So yeah, a little bit of guilt, but also anger. A lot of anger, like who the hell do you think you are coming to my clinic, like gaslighting me into something, <laughs> into saying something, you know what I mean? Like that too, like the human side of Christy being like, well, what the hell? like who the hell do you think you are and kind of wanting to lay into her a bit but also Christy being Christy coming from it in a little bit more of a, a a doctoral perspective of this isn't how things are done but Marielle also catching that Christy's manic right now and can't talk to anybody <laughs> and that's what we see like Marielle knows how to navigate Christy in a way that uh, nobody else in town does like Christy's only that level of um kind of emotionally label and with 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 Mariel uh and she knows what to do I think if she were to freak out like that with Kenny Kenny wouldn't know what to do so, so that's one, kind of, 
there's some nuance in between in between that so one final question um i just watched episode eight so i have to ask about it and i will post this interview after it's aired so feel free to talk about spoilers um can you please share about the experience of filming that scene where you are smacking a dead body over and over again because that was just something to behold and yeah you had oozing bile and everything it was a lot it was a lot yeah oh that's episode seven Oh, was it? Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Well, it was both of them with de- dealing with the ramifications of the dead body. But yeah, I watched both uh, seven and eight recently. Yeah, that was a wild scene to shoot, and I was also glad that it existed because I think it was time Christy had uh, an, an explosive moment. I think um, there was so much build up to that between uh, Marielle's withdrawal, navigating that, the guilt around that, uh, her fight with Kenny, just her sheer burnout as well. I mean, I don't even think the girl has slept yet. Like she just dealt with Ellis the other night, saved his life. So plus Boyd, Worms, everything. She's, she's, she's had enough. And then I think she's just hoping that this thing has an answer because she likes to fix things. She likes to have the answer. She likes to, to be a part of a solution. And then she opens it up and she's like, this is, I can't work with this. You know what I mean? And so her doctor brain goes out the window and she's just totally fueled by her (laughs) by her like primal instincts in that moment and by it's so interesting because by allowing her to just feel and release she ends up discovering something so useful so I thought that was such an interesting moment in the writing and in her character as well well thank you so much for your time Chloe I don't know if I'm the last one or probably one of the last (laughs) interviews that you have but uh yeah great work on the show and I really I've enjoyed watching the whole journey of her character thank you so much yeah thanks for the chat of course the biggest development with Fatima this season has been that she's pregnant and we saw at the beginning of the season that she was very frantic about the new bus passengers being trapped outside so I wanted to know was that level of visceral emotion being fueled by her pregnancy because I don't know if she already had a suspicion that she might be pregnant at that point. Interesting. Uh, I think so. I think she was still at the stages of uh, why haven't I gotten my period and slash um, what are all these new emotions and thoughts and feelings that I'm feeling that I don't quite understand. Um, But that's so interesting that you say that. I hadn't thought about it that way. I'm sure. Yeah, every month that night makes a lot more sense to me now. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) I would have thought that that would have been something either you had been talked about or that you had reflected on as the performer bringing her to life. But I don't know. Maybe I just overthink the material because of what I do. (laughs) I'm going to be honest with you. We don't get the scripts ahead of time. We get them when they're written. And I didn't have that script at that stage. So... Uh, when I was preparing it, it was a matter of I, I need to bring these people inside because I need to help people. Um, but a lot of things last season also make sense if she's been pregnant this whole time. Maybe she knew, maybe she didn't know. Um, but yeah. She told Donna that she had been told that she was not able to have children, which is part of the reason why she's so taken aback by getting pregnant. Uh, was that a detail that you had been informed of ahead of time that you were able to, I guess, take in internally and put into your performance of the character? No, um, that was news to me the day that I got that script. Um, but we knew that she, we had discussed the traumatic background that she comes from, and I knew nothing good come could have come from it. Um, but knowing that she couldn't have children, uh, medically it was it was news to me very interesting discovery i will say but yeah i can't i can't wait to see where they kind of where they go with that yeah because i wasn't sure if it kind of played into what we saw more of in season one where there was this there were these notes of free love in the way that she navigated her relationship so that's why i wasn't sure if you already um had that little little nugget of information in mind no Um, that's just how well the show is written they know what they're doing even if we don't. Now, I'm a big fan of romance, and I love when good love stories can be integrated into non-romance genres. So what do you think it is that has ultimately made Fatima and Ellis fall in love and keep loving each other as much as they do? I want to say trauma, but that can't be all it was. I think that 
um, the circumstances that surrounded them meeting. Um, and Donna, like in my mind, I'd like to think that Ellis was Fatima's proxy when they met and it was a little meet cute and she was struggling and da 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 da. But, um, you know, I and that is enough to allow connecting with someone. Um, like it just, it would make it easier, I'd imagine. Um, but he's also her rock, you know, just Ellis as a person. He's very, uh, very free spirited and very um, sensitive and someone who could understand Fatima in that way, I think helped falling for him a little bit. In season two, you've had to emote a lot more intensely with things like terror, despair, anguish. Can you share a bit about your process as an actor in order to be able to get yourself to the place of being able to express those things? Because I've been taking acting classes and definitely it's it requires a lot of energy when you really have to go big and make it believable. You're definitely right that it takes a lot of energy. It does. Um, but that I, I, I'm going to say that the script again, the script is so well written that, that you're job isn't very hard. Um, everything you need is on the page and the characters, like you said, are so well developed that it's not hard connecting with them. Like our actors also, they're, it doesn't help that they're such good actors. So just being in a, in a scene where, you know, someone's bleeding onto your hand, whether it's real blood or fake blood, it, it brings it out of you, whether you've prepped the night before or not, or but again, personally, I do like to, in my trailer, a little bit do of, what was that sentence? In my trailer, I do like to um, meditate a little bit. I do like to read over my lines and I do like to, you know, breathe in and breathe out and get on set and just play. And it, it all it all comes together. The script, the acting, the, the characters, the actors, it all comes together to create one performance that connects with people. And I love that. And then finally, just in a general sense, what can you tease about what's still to come in these final episodes of season two? Because I've seen as far as episode eight, so I've, I'm a little ahead, but I haven't seen everything yet. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? Um, you'll just have to watch and find out. The I want to say more questions, but that's just going to piss people off. Uh, maybe some answers. Um, maybe some stuff about season three. Uh, oh, this is so much fun. I like this game. Um, yeah, I mean, more, more, more chaos, more chaos, some answers. Well, but chaos, is, more chaos. chaos is entertaining. So I will take that and I will run with that. <laughs> Thank you so much for your Great. time. <laughs> and uh, have a lovely day. Thank you, you too.